The number one issue for young Americans this election is not student loans, not abortion or guns, but it's housing. Welcome back to the channel. We are doing another reaction video. Patrick Bet David, I don't know if you guys are viewers of this channel. Love what that channel has grown into becoming. And I love that little podcast they have on in the mornings as well. And I feel like they give out great information. I feel like it's very well not one-sided. I feel like they've got both sides of the spectrum. Um, and yeah, let's look at this video. They're talking about how the American dream is crushed. So yeah, they're basically talking about how the American dream no longer exists. And as a real estate agent, I want to give you perspective on it since a lot of the news that you hear is doom and gloom. So yeah, let's get into it. My name's Trevon and I work with Century 21, Mike Bowman. The number one issue for young Americans this election is not student loans, not abortion or guns, but it's housing. Yeah, I mean, housing, I'll be honest, it seems like it's impossible if you're not in the know or you don't know someone that's familiar with buying a home. Now, it might seem impossible to afford a million dollar home if you're not making a million dollar type of wages. But I tell you, it is definitely possible to own a home. I mean, like you can own a new build. I mean, like I'm seeing remodeled homes, at least a thousand square feet in DFW go for under 250,000. So, and I mean, to get into these homes, they're offering, they offer great programs in some cases, depending on what you are, um, depending on the lender that you're working with. Um, but you can definitely get in and i mean your down payment to get into the house less than two thousand dollars and depending on who you use as a realtor and how you negotiate the deal okay housing so what are they talking about housing these young people housing affordability is the top election issue for gen z according to a survey done by redfin with 12 percent of gen z respondents believe they will never own a home due to record high home prices elevate mortgage rates above seven percent and expensive rents Elijah De La Campa from Redfin noted the cost of starter homes has increased twice as fast as incomes. The median home sale price in the U.S. reached an all-time high of 390 May of 2023. Despite a strong economy with low unemployment and rising wages, many young Americans find buying a home impossible. With 42% of Gen Z receiving financial support from their parents for rent or housing costs. Holy shit. 42% of Gen Z is getting help from parents right now. Well, 42%. I mean, that's a wild number. A wild number. And I, I mean, it's understandable. I, I mean, if you've looked at my last videos, I showed you where one of the boomers was talking about how it's incredible how much it costs to live compared to when she grew up. So... Um, partly it's no surprise, but partly I also am shocked a little bit because that's a very high number. And with the way things are tracking, doesn't look like it's going to get any lower. Um, and yeah, you, I mean, think about it for the, for this instance, basically for a $200,000 home, you're going to be paying around 2000 per month for for $300,000. You're going to be paying about 3000 per month. I mean, not quoted, don't quote me on those numbers, but that's the basic gist. I mean, of course you can buy your interest rate down. And if you can get locked in or assume someone's loan, there's a way to get it lower. But there are avenues and ways to get in besides you specifically just making all the money. While 90% of major metro areas saw an increase in housing supply, home prices in the South, particularly Austin, Texas, and Northport, Florida are falling. Tom. So no surprise. This, But this is what's going on. When you see an article like this, it really just pisses me off because this is just a little pebble of what is a bigger affordability crisis that's been brought on by inflation and printing a bunch of money. That's what's happened here. And now this is remember, I always talk upstream, downstream. You, know, you hear me talk about that. This. Yeah, he makes Tom. I love his points. He makes a really good point here because, yes, basically the moment they started printing all this money in 2020 everything got expensive. I don't know if you go to the store nowadays, but $250 of groceries, it's honestly not that much. And it's quite shocking um, that it's like that right now. So with the way things are headed, it's not just the housing market that is um, causing the effect. It's definitely inflation um, that's really kicking everybody's ass.
This is the downstream problem. This is the polluted little lake that's at the end of the creek and the river, and the creek and the river are bringing the, the bad water into the lake. And why is it bad water? Because it got polluted way upstream. This is what it is. Upstream from these people, so that's while they were in high school, while they were in college, if they went to college or serving a couple of years in the military, inflation was going crazy. We were printing money. We raised the price of assets. And now we have affordability crisis. So the number one issue for Americans when they say it's housing, well, what they're really saying is affordability in America. That's what they're saying. And they're saying currently the affordability is so bad that I got to think about getting support from my parents or living with my parents. That's what it is. And so if this is, if you let this in your mind be like, oh, it's the housing market, the housing market. It's not. It's the leadership of this country and it's the affordability crisis showing up as the number one issue for this group. The affordability is hitting them hardest in terms of housing. Yeah, Tom has a great point. Uh, kind of like I said before, it's not just housing that's causing the issue. Of course, inflation is making everything more expensive because the value of the dollar is decreasing. So that's not helping. And yeah, let's see what he has to say. Let me talk to my Gen Z friends out there. I have a couch. Um, I almost got to give an MLK speech right now. Yes. I have a Here dream. We go. Here we go. I have a couch. <laughs> I have a dream. Exactly. I have a couch. Well Guys, the American the dream, the American dream, dream has changed. it's still alive and well in America. Your parents and your the only difference is the American dream no has changed. The American dream of your of your parents and your grandparents and work the same job for no years and get a longer and retire exists. And get a gold watch. The ability to get a job and work at the same job for 50 years and get a pension and retire and get a gold watch and say, hey, great job, and get a house and get a two-car garage and have 2.2 kids and have a dog and just live in the suburbs and just have a two-car uh, two -car situation and just work for the same company no longer exists. So stop crying about it, that Talk everything that happened in the past in the 80s and 90s uh, when your parents were starting to make money has changed. So rather than cry about it and bitch and moan, oh my God, I can't do something different. I mean, he has a point. At some point, like, I don't know, when I was like 25, 26, I don't know, I just started to realize like, I need to learn way more about money. I need to learn more about finances and I need to figure out a job that can provide me that given how hard I may or may not work. So, I mean, that is one reason why I chose real estate. Now, don't get me wrong. It ain't the easiest gig ever, um, but it's definitely possible to make a living. Um, yeah, you just got to get out there and you just got to hustle. Um, there's tons of avenues to, to, you know, to get lead generation. But for instance, just focusing on career paths that will give you kind of what you want. I mean, I know a lot of people focus on fields or like when you go into schooling or when you come out of high school, you don't know what to really do. You don't know what you want to do. So it's hard to get locked in. And by the time you're 26, 27, if you're not like steady in your career or you're not on the pathway to be at a job that's going to make you a decent living, you do get hit with reality of like, holy shit, like I need to either get my stuff together or like a lot of people are doing, they're kind of playing the victim mentality where it's just too hard to to this, to that. It's definitely possible. And I mean, if you want to really look at it, maybe look for something cheaper, right? Maybe you look for a home that's under 200, under 250. It's going to be ugly. You're going to have to do some work to it, but at least you start to own the asset, right? And through time, at least you'll, you'll earn that asset growth. And depending on where you buy this home, you might get some equity build up five, 10 years from now. And that can be a way out of a tough situation you might be in. It just depends, right? You want to get with a real estate investor or at least a financial advisor, um, or at least someone who is familiar with investing into real estate or, or just knows at least a thing or two, right? Don't just hop in blind buying a home thinking it's going to make you money because that's just not how it works. And also just change your mentality. If you are in a position right now where you don't feel like you're doing enough and you're under 40, 50, bro, just switch it up. Switch it up. Life's too short to just be stale. Try your best to, to do something different. And honestly, you have time, right? I mean, it doesn't take that long to go get a tradesmanship or, you know, some type of licensing, you know, two to five years. And then you can start making decent money, you know, seven to eight years down the line. Um, 
I think the the, the main thing is here, you just got to get started and believe in yourself. What's the definition of crazy? Doing the same thing over and over and over again. With no results. And expecting the different results. So what's different? I always say this. The best thing you can do, especially when you're 20s and 30s, to you guys out there, women, you have a different, you have a different objective, okay? For the men out there, I would encourage you to do the following. Understand this basic concept. The number one thing you can be doing in your life right now, before you have kids and a family, as you're working on your career, purpose over pleasure, purpose over punani, uh, is understand this concept. Low overhead and high flexibility is the key to your life right now. Keep your costs low, keep it moving, keep it grooving, and keep your flexibility high because you don't know where you're going to end up in the next two, five, ten years. You might work for this company, an opportunity comes up, you might be in New York, you might be in Boston, you might go from Boston to Austin, all of a sudden you're in California, fuck California, moving to Florida, well, cost of living in Florida is a little too high, boom, I'm going to North Florida, keep it moving. So the cost of a house, when I started doing financial content in 2016 to 18, how much was the cost of an average house in America? $250,000. Okay. How much is the average cost that they say is a median house in America now? $400,000. What's the exact number, Tom? $390,613. Okay. So save that extra 10 grand, put that into a, to the stock market. What's my point? So if you can't buy a house, stop bitching about it and do something different. Go get a roommate, live with your girl, split the rent, figure it out. I get it. If you have low overhead, take all that extra money that you would typically be pumping into a mortgage payment, into taxes, into insurance, into maintenance, into HOA, and just invest in the market. Now, where should you invest in the market? Get a 401k, get a Roth IRA, get index funds, get crypto. Like Pat always talks about non-duplicatable assets, get some cards, just do something different. Because the reality is this, is the are interest rates coming down anytime soon, Tom? No, but the end of this year, there's still going to be mortgages like six point seven five. Bingo. So, so rather, yeah, mortgage. I mean, interest rates getting cut. I mean, they're not getting cut as we want them to get cut. They're they're definitely lower. But at the beginning of the year, people were expecting a lot of rate cuts, and um, yeah, we didn't even get touched. We didn't. We so far haven't touched one. So, I mean, he's not wrong. A lot of the times, I don't care for his perspective. Not, not I. A lot of the times, I don't align with his perspective, but on this one, I think he nailed it. And then sit around being like, hey, don't have a house. Just do something different. And that's what I've done. There you go. You know, Rob, pull up what I just showed you, what I just texted you, if you could do that. Um, after that fantastic uh, Adam, Adam Luther King speech. There it is. That, uh, I have a dream. Exactly. Was just, I can uh, sum it up. Get mad ALK, and vote. <laughs> ALK, yeah. Rob. The voting can. isn't going to do anything about the home prices, though. Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's there's a part of it here that if you can, you got to rob. Mm -hmm. Close that and go to the bottom. There you go. Go a little lower. Okay, so check that out. So that's inventory versus price of existing homes. Now, that only goes till 2022, right? The blue shows median price of existing homes. Keep climbing, right? The green is inventory, right? Is inventory. If inventory keeps going lower and lower and lower, prices go up. I mean, this is like the basic supply and demand, right? Yep. So the, the, whoever becomes a, and, and the types of homes they're no longer building is starter homes. Like, it's almost like this. Like, imagine you come to my dealership. What is the average salary coming out of college? Just give, give me a number. Let's say $50,000, okay? So imagine in America, all of a sudden, you go, if you're making 50 grand a year, what 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 apartment rent can you afford at fifty grand a year? You live by yourself. What what rent thousand? can you? Thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand bucks. Let's say fifteen hundred bucks a month. Let's say fifteen hundred yeah. bucks a month. Okay, fifteen hundred bucks a month. What am I getting? Studio, one bedroom. Studio. I'm not getting anything crazy. Yeah, it depends on what city you're living in, and you're getting a you're getting a half Let's a shoebox in New York. Depending you're getting on the city, a decent apartment, two bedroom, in Oklahoma, or a studio. Is that fair? Yeah, two bedroom, yep. two and two or studio. Yeah, exactly. So th this is the problem, Adam. That's a real issue. Mm -hmm. That people who you're voting for, this has to be something that the younger audience, Gen Z, you have to be asking about. So imagine all of a sudden, the average kid coming out of college, rent he can afford fifteen hundred bucks. She can afford fifteen hundred. What is the average car payment you can right out of high school? I mean, right out of college, I couldn't afford shit. Like, I didn't even have the capability in my mind to fathom paying over like a thousand a month. So, I mean, yeah, maybe mindsets do need to change. Like I said, my mindset out of college was not finances, it was not at all. So, yeah.
mindset can change. If you can start making that right out of college, yeah, I think that's even pretty solid. But I was not. And I don't know how many people are right out of college. Afford when you come out of college. Jeez. You can't. No, you can't afford. Just give me a number. 200. No. You're not going to find nothing the, the, at 200. Yeah, you're not going to find a car payment below 500 bucks and a new car payment. Rob, what do you want to say? Rob. Like a, but, but what kind of car are you getting? Are you going cheap? No, forget about it. What oh, can you afford? Any car. Give me a payment. Yeah. You could probably afford around 300 bucks, which isn't going to get you That's anything. Okay. If, you're, if you're using so, the qualifying. Uh, so so and, to, to explain this analogy is the following. Imagine if 100% of dealerships across the country, you go to the dealership. You're making 50 grand a year. Your rent is 1500 bucks. The minimum cheapest car you can buy is 1200 bucks. Once. You can't afford it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then you have to go, what's the alternative? Either Uber or get a bicycle or work close to his place. But there's not the, the jump doesn't go from zero to 300 to 600 to 900 to 1200. It goes zero to what? 1200. Yeah. What Gen Z is saying is, Man, I'm coming out. I need something in between. I can't go zero to a four hundred thousand dollar house. What if I could go from zero to two hundred dollar house, two hundred thousand dollar house? This level is missing. That's exactly. the level that's missing. Mm -hmm. And and builders, uh, whoever's running for office, whatever in your state, your governor, senate, you can talk to Congress. He's spot on. There definitely are. I mean, okay, he's wrong and right. Right? Depends where you live. For instance. Starter home in Plano, Texas, not going to be cheap, not even going to be under 400000 probably not even going to be under 600000 But Fort Worth, you can find a remodeled home, old home, but put some love into it, under three hundred, under two fifty, maybe even less depending on where you go. So there are options. But are you willing to bend? Are you willing to be flexible to be an owner? And the places and builders who do build under 200, I don't want to say they're in areas maybe you don't want to live in, but the house, I don't want to say the quality is bad, but I would not buy a 2024 new build under $200,000 depending on the builder maybe you know a guy maybe out in the more out in a rural a more rural area it's definitely possible uh, but he's spot on i mean the starting new build 2024 i'm gonna say you gotta be at least 275 275 300k it's gonna be like some lennar build or some dr horton build away from the city most likely um, but it is possible, and they are doing financing deals of, you know, for depending on people. You know what I mean? First time homeowner, you only need to put 3.5 down, depending on what your goals are financial wise. So there's opportunity, but yeah, he is spot on. There should be a, a level in between, and there's not. In your state, your governor, senator, you can. Besides buying a resale home, that's cheap and maybe fixing it up. But if you're not somebody that knows how to do that, you have the expenses, you know what I mean? Do you want to live in a construction zone or construction site? Yeah. So you can even bring this up on Twitter with others, with presidents, is what are we doing to build more starter homes in cities? What incentive is being given to builders to build more starter homes? We need more starter homes. That's what's not being built for them to have the opportunity to buy something. Tom, you look like you want to say something. <clears throat> no, I, I'm. what I want to say is bingo, exactly right, PBD. $50,000 after taxes is approximately, on a national 40 basis, grand. no, no, 36, which is exactly three grand a month. And if I spent 1200 on rent, 1500 on rent, that's half of my take home. Mm -hmm. You know, that's above 40%. So now I've got 1500 left. That's Ooh. why we're saying the most you could possibly afford and there would be 300. Now you got to live on 900 bucks, 200 bucks a week for food, electricity, all the rest of the stuff. Tilt, as they say in pinball, that model doesn't work. It's exactly what Pat's talking about. There's what, nothing what, left. Let me ask you, what's a bigger burden? What's a bigger burden? Is the bigger burden boomers who are 62 years old, 65 years old, 
you know, 55 and up who have worked their asses up. I mean, let me just go 60 plus. Your kids are 30 years old. They're coming out of college. You're 25 years old. They're coming out of college. The, the burden of parents to support younger kids or is it the bigger burden for kids to support aging parents? What's a bigger burden? It's a way bigger burden where the parents are still taking care of the kids. What do you think? You no, know, I, th I think the bigger burden we're going to see is the kids taking care of the parents once entitlements get cut and as things can become more expensive. Because there are far more boomers that need to be taken care of. And there are far more boomers. In the Another, see, this is why I love the PPD podcast. They nail it every time. I don't know if you know, but this is a little insight. 2025... And 2026 is supposed to be the year millions of boomers retire, down, start to downsize. Interest rates should be a little bit lower, and there's going to be way more inventory. So the housing market in DFW, Dallas, is going to be wild because there's going to be tons of people who need to get out of those big old houses, and they're going to downsize. And they're going to be able to buy cash, most likely a smaller home. So... Things are about to change drastically. I do feel like it's a bigger burden for the kids to take care of the older folks, especially if the older folks are in these areas where they're starting to do gentrification, basically, and you're starting to see it. So the way it works is like, let's say you bought a home in 2020, you, or let's say you, your grandma owns a home in some little small little city area, close to a city, close to an, a popular area. Well, they're starting to go into those places, build nicer homes push that property value up. I mean, not specifically on purpose, pushing the property up, the property value up. That's just what happens. Property value gets pushed up. These people get their taxes the, the following year. They're just like, holy shit, my taxes went up 10 times, five times. Can't live here, don't wanna live here. So they move. So that is starting to happen. I um, mean, you're starting to see it in these areas. Uh, kind of what I'm saying where you can buy a home under 300,000 and it's like an older home remodeled, right? That boomer generation that don't have cost. that that don't have a responsible or don't have, not respond they don't have an adequate supplemental savings to go along with Social Security and Medicare. The number of those versus the number of kids they have, that's I think PBD. I think that gets worse year by year. I think that's the burden. I think sometimes the kids moving back in may help. What if your son or daughter who's single moves back in and pays you 400 bucks a month yeah. and takes you to your medical appointments and, and balances out some of your food bill? I guess there's a lot of boomers and there's not yeah. a lot of kids and there's a lot of that's boomers without good savings. Yeah, that's what I, I'm asking I, the I guess the question is, is this a short term it's, problem or a long term problem? Because as much as you're talking about the boomers, there's also the boomerangers, the boomerang generation, all these Gen Z kids that were trying to. You know, make something of self between 2020 and 2024. Oh, COVID happened. Reverse boomerang. Now they're living back with the parents. What was the stat here? What percentage of 42%, parents? 42 percent, 40 whatever percent are still basically getting funding from their yes. parents. What are we yes. talking about here? Obviously, the kids are still relying on their burden? parents. Short term, undoubtedly. Long term, yes. People are living longer. Like now, I'm helping my mother pay for stuff, but. When I was younger, my mother would help me. It's just the cycle of life. But you actually brought up a really good point about how there's no starter homes. Yeah. So this is sort of indicative of how the middle class is getting squeezed. You were basically saying that there's nothing in the middle, right? You and need that. There exactly. needs to be a level. So, like So exactly. I agree with you. But what's the, what's the metaphor here is that we always hear that the widening gap between the rich and the poor, the K-shaped economy, that the middle class is getting squeezed, right? The, um, the wealth gap. So you're either rich... Or you're either poor. Yeah. So if you're rich, you're not really worried about what rent is or what the mortgage is. You can pay 10 grand a month or 20 grand a month, no problem. But if you're in the poor camp, and who you always say, who's in your ear? Who's in, where you're getting your advice from? If you're 20 years old and you're getting advice from your 52-year-old father or your 82-year-old grandfather, they're more than likely giving you the wrong advice. Why would I say such a thing? Because the world has changed and they haven't adapted. They're still telling you, well, you got to go to college and you got to you got to buy a house and you got to you got to do what I did. No, you don't do the exact things that they did because the world has changed completely. If you just do like if you, you're talking about there's one problem that these kids all have, Pat, uh, Tom, it's a four letter word and it's called math. The math doesn't add up for them to buy a house, to have a car payment and to actually live a life. Last point, we did a segment a week ago called money dysmorphia. Do you remember that? Money dysmorphia, how Gen Z is just completely aloof when it comes to their money. 
they see on social media all these kids balling out and having the time of their lives, and they're like, oh, I could go in a four-day Mercedes Benz. Bitch, you can't afford it a Mercedes Benz. You make 50 grand a year. You need to make a buck 20 to, uh, to afford that Benz. Now they got an 800. Yeah, this will be. Yeah, he kind of spilled off for a little bit, but he does have a point. I mean, you got to focus your finances and you got to love to kind of learn about it. And that's kind of what I'm saying. I'm telling you, when I was like 25, 26, maybe a little younger, um, yeah, got into trading, got into the stock market got into finances just to figure it really out. You know, I never really knew what you could do with money, um, ways to get wealthy and not just like some guru camp, really studying, figuring out these things and then testing them out to see what works best for you. So yeah, getting smarter with your money, don't take loans out, you know, don't go on vacations that you don't need to go on. There's tons of Tons of avenues. I mean, that vacation you're choosing to go on is literally your down payment for the home. And then make money again for the next two months, go on vacation. I'm pretty sure for most people too, when you buy a home, you don't have to make your, your first mortgage payment isn't for like 45 days. Don't quote me, but that's how it works for me. Our payment and they're wondering why they can't live their life because you're doing the same things your parents did and you can't afford it. A technical question. How do you know they're a bitch? I'm just, I've seen it. How do you it. know where you categorically tell the entire PBD podcast yes. audience you call them? But by the way, he thinks that. The well, rest of us don't. The rest I, of us think you're a big dog yeah. capable no. of doing something special with your life if you choose to. 10% of the people Anyways, out there, there's people in the comments let that me, are let bitches. Me, if there's ever been a time for you to find ways to get better strategies to recreate yourself so you can take your business to the next level in 2024, 2025. This is the time because AI's speed of advancement is accelerating at pace that most people are not gonna be able to follow. The gist here is believe in yourself. Owning a home is definitely possible. It is not the end of the world. Maybe own it with some friends. Eventually rent it out. There you go. You got some cash flow. Maybe Airbnb it if you pick out the right location. There's tons of avenues and it is not impossible. Um, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you watching. My name is Trevon. I am a real estate agent in the DFW, yeah, in the DFW Dallas Metroplex. If you ever have questions about real estate, feel free to shoot me a call or text. Uh, but yeah, until next time, catch you later.